Hey guys, welcome back to the Burning Ice Tech channel for another fun lesson of Windows Server 2019. As you guys can probably already see, today's lesson is all about Azure AD and on-premises AD. More specifically, synchronizing your Active Directories with one another. Now, topics-wise, what are we going to be discussing today? We're first going to be looking at some of the prerequisites that needs to be in place. These are settings and configurations you need to set up before you can do the synchronization. Um, things you need to go and download, and install, you know, all that jazz. So we're going to be taking a look at that and I'm going to demonstrate that for you guys as far as possible. And then after we've done that, I'm going to be doing a demo of the actual synchronization. How does it actually look once it takes place? So before we actually jump into the course, guys, if you are new to this course, please give this video a like. If you're new to my channel, subscribe. I've seen most of you guys are actually not subscribed even to the channel when you watch my videos. Bunch of freeloaders. I'm kidding, of course. Um, so yeah, with that out of the way, guys, I think we can just go ahead and jump in. So our first topic, obviously, is the sync prerequisites. What do we need to go and configure and set up and download and install and all that before we can actually jump into the synchronization part of things? So what are these prerequisites? Well, the first one is admin accounts. So you are going to have to go and set up more than one admin account, not just one. The first one is a global administrator account. This is pretty much the highest privilege account you can get on the Azure Active Directory. You will need to go and set one up or create one actually better yet. And this is going to be used specifically for synchronization. So nobody's going to use this as a human being. This is going to be a tool that's going to be using these accounts. And this tool will need two administrator accounts. One is global. And the other one is a normal administrator account in the on-premises environment. This is just to make sure that you are not just a member or an employee of these two Active Directories, but that you are actually, in fact, authorized to go and do Active Directory synchronization. Otherwise, I could very well, very easily steal your Active Directory. You know, so if your Active Directory is in the cloud, I can go and make one on-premises and, well, try and synchronize to it and steal your Active Directory and vice versa. So it's to make sure that you are, in fact, an employee or a member. That's why you need to provide an account. And the fact that you have to provide an administrator account is to make sure that you're actually authorized. Never mind working for that organization. Are you allowed to go and pull this stuff? Because it's pretty bold. Let's face it. Something else that needs to be set up, well, not set up per se, is the Azure AD Connect tool. That, my dear friends, is a tool we're going to have to go and download. There's multiple ways you can go about it. Downloading it is actually very quick and very easy. It's normally about 105 megabytes, but it could be larger now. The last time I checked it was 105. I will, however, go and download it again just to show you guys what the current size is so that you can guys can get a fairly updated you know, review as to how big the size actually is. Once you've got that tool, it is something you're actually going to have to go and install on your server on-premises. It is suggested that you go and install this on your root Active Directory on-premises. Not compulsory, though. It's up to you where you're going to run that tool. That tool is what's going to be doing the synchronization in the, the day. And when you run that tool, it's basically a little wizard. It's going to ask you for two admin accounts, one of which is the global one for the Active Directory in the cloud. The other one is going to be the administrator account on premises. So I think since we've got the prerequisites out of the way, guys, let's jump in. I'm going to circle to my Azure portal and I'm actually going to go ahead and create this global administrator account. All right, guys, here we are on my Azure portal. So I'm going to go here to the left hand side and expand this menu, which is basically a navigation pane. And I'm more specifically going to be looking for the Azure Active Directory. So at the moment, mine's pretty blank, actually, for the most part. I'll see if I can actually just synchronize to the default directory. Otherwise, I'll just go ahead and create myself my own little custom domain. Um, at the end of the day, this is just to show you guys that synchronization can actually go and take place. You'll see there's already a little notification here. It says Azure AD Connect not enabled and the sync has never actually run. That's just in case you happen to have that. So the first thing I'm going to go and do is create myself a global administrator account for the purposes of synchronization. So I'm going to go here to my users. Once you get to your users, you are going to want to go here to where it says new user. And um, I suppose it doesn't really matter what you go and call it. But what Microsoft suggests, and I do actually agree with them on this, is give it a proper name, you know, so that you can identify this account and so you know this is used for synchronization. So a proper name would probably be something like sync. Since this account is going to be used for synchronization, I would say call it something like sync. At least then we know it's called, you know, it's, it's used for synchronization. So I'm just going to go and call it sync, 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 sync. That should be so fine for now. 
Faucet wise does not really matter because this is gonna be a temporary password But I suppose we can go and say show password. I can go and copy paste that. I'm gonna copy it into my clipboard and Then I'm gonna go here to my roles at the moment. This person is just a user So even though this is just a computer that account is just a user which means there's absolutely zero privilege We need to make this person a global administrator even though it's just gonna be a computer so you're gonna go click there on user. Gives you a long list of all the admin accounts and limited admin accounts. We're gonna scroll down until we find the letter G for global administrator. There we go, global administrator, tick that box. That's all we need on the Azure side. Select. So this account's now global administrator and we're gonna go and create the account. There we go. The account has been created. Now, something I want to mention to you guys is normally when you run that little wizard being the Azure AD Connect tool, uh, as soon as you provide your global administrator account in the past, and I'm talking about like two, three years ago, if you did not change that temporary password, you would have to go and change that first before you run that wizard. So you would normally have to go and log out here and log on as that sync user with the temporary password and change it to something new. And then you would go and run that little wizard. That, my dear friends, is no longer required. So if you forgot to change the temporary password, or if you're just plain lazy, you know, then you don't have to. As soon as you run that wizard, if it sees that you're still using the temporary password, it actually detects that and allows you to change the password within the wizard itself. You just go and type in your old password, it's gonna ask you for a new one, which you just need to go and type in twice just to confirm. And that's that, my friends. Very quick, very easy, very convenient, I must say. So as for the AD Connect tools, we've already set up the, the admin account on the Azure portal side. So as for the AD Connect tool, where do we find that? There's multiple ways you can go about that. So I'm going to go back to my Azure AD. Let's go back to Azure AD. In this menu, which is effectively a blade, if you scroll down, you'll find there is a little tool, Azure AD Connect. It's not the actual tool itself, it's where you were going to find the tool. And then here, there's actually a little link that says download Azure AD Connect. Before I click on that, I want you to observe the URL. Currently, we're on HTTPS portal.azure.com. We are on the Azure portal. And should I click on that, which is what I'm going to do, we are now no longer on the Azure portal. You'll see it's www.microsoft.com. We're not on the Azure portal. So with that in mind, you can actually find this tool not just via the Azure portal, if you go run a search via something like Google search engine, and you run a search for Azure AD Connect tool, in the results, if you click on that link, it's gonna take you to the exact same website we're on right now. So, I mean, I already have it downloaded, but let me download it anyway so we can see what the size is, because I think it was 105 the last time I checked. So let's download it. All right, so it seems they've increased it slightly. So it's no longer 105 megabyte download, it's 153 megabyte download. Still very small. So you are supposed to go and drop that little setup file on your server of choice. It's suggested you do this on the root Active Directory being your main Active Directory parent server on premises. Not compulsory though, like I said earlier. So you're gonna go drop that file there. It's up to you where you can be on a desktop, can be in your documents. You run that little setup file and it's basically a little wizard. In the past it was very complicated. Now a kid can do it. You don't even need to have a level of Azure knowledge you don't even need to be tech savvy to run that tool. It's as straight arrow as can be. If you don't know what you're doing, I would suggest just go with all the defaults in the beginning. You can always go and tweak it afterwards. So in the beginning, just go and type in your admin accounts and just click next, 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 and go with all the defaults. So I'm gonna go ahead and say save. And there we go, it's in my downloads. So I'm gonna go and use that a little bit later. All right, so gentlemen and ladies, uh, Azure portal wise, that is all for now. The next time we're going to be going here onto the Azure portal will be to see if the synchronization is actually taking place. So once again, there's two accounts, my main admin account for my subscription, my temporary account, you know, for which I'm going to be using for synchronization purposes. And that effectively is the only account. Should synchronization be successful, any accounts I have on premises, well, basically any objects I have on premises, accounts, groups, um, organizational units, any objects you've got on premises, those will be synchronized to your Azure Active Directory. 
at least that's the idea. So whether we're going to be successful, that's a different story. Hopefully this will work. So I think all that's left to do here is to circle to our on-premises Active Directory environment, drop that little tool and run it. All right, folks, here we are on the on-premises server, which also has the on-premises Active Directory. So this is the exact same server we've used in the previous videos of this lesson. So if you followed this series, you'd recognize the server. So the, real, the only real differences here is I've taken the liberty of dumping that uh, little setup file on the desktop here already just to save us some time. And on the Active Directory side itself, I went and made a few extra OUs and user accounts just to make it more realistic when we actually go do the synchronization. So let me just open that up for you guys here. So you can see it's still the same OUs. So on the Tokyo branch, I simply just went and made extra four OUs here just for different departments just to give it some realism. And then here on the Paris, I went and made this finance that wasn't there previously. And then specifically under the IG department, specifically under users, you might remember if you've been following the series, we only had the account called Bob. And that's the account we used on our one Windows 10 machine. I went and made Billy Bob now and Jill Summers and Sam Rue. I just spam suck those names. And then just also made a random group there just to give this some realism, you know, so that we can actually see some stuff, you know, synchronized to the cloud once we do this little tool. So that out of the way, let's minimize that, minimize that. And let's go ahead and run this little tool. All right, ladies and gents. So here you simply just go and agree. It's like getting married. You never know what you're getting into until it's too late. Continue. Express. Now for the most part, if you don't know what you're doing, if you're brand new to this, I encourage you highly to just go with Express settings. Um, I know as IT people, we're normally used to going to custom or advanced and stuff, but with this, you don't actually need to. So if you've got a single forest and a single domain, and everything is pretty default in your company, just go with the default. Do not tamper with the default settings until it's done of the initial synchronization. Once it's done its full initial synchronization, then you can go and tamper with the settings and choose what you want to synchronize, what you don't want to synchronize. You know, so there's currently anything that's being synchronized that you don't want to synchronize, objects wise, you can go and unsynchronize that. If there's something that's not being synchronized that you would like to synchronize, you can just go and add that. And if the next sync run, it's going to go and sync that. So anytime you're really going to go and choose customize here for something like if you're sitting with a company that's got more than one forest, then you can go and do that. Or if you're sitting with a situation where you've got an ADFS on premises, then you might want to go and use that as well. So for the most part, you're probably going to go with Express. Let's go with Express. And there is the first account I told you guys that it's going to ask us. This is the sync account that we had to go and create on the Azure portal. It has to be a global administrator account. As you can see there, it says global administrator. This is to make sure that we're not just an employee or a member of that organization, that we were also authorized. So I'm going to go ahead here and provide that account. There we go. I've typed in my account. You can see it's still, it doesn't have a proper alias, anything set up. This is as default as it gets. So that's obviously very unuser friendly, very unprofessional. So ideally in a real company environment, you would already have your domain and your aliases and all that set up. So it's not going to be nearly as long and inconvenient and unprofessional as mine. So the point here is I'm using my sync account. That's the important thing here. Here we go, deposits in. Um, I've actually just gone ahead and changed the password already in the background, uh, just to save us some time. So that password is now a permanent password, not a temporary password, just want to save us some time. Next, and there we go. Like I previously said, it's first gonna ask you for an AD account, a global admin account on your Azure AD, Secondly, it's going to ask you again for an AD account. This time it's an admin account on the local Active Directory. So this time I'm going to go type in my domain, my custom domain, burningicetech.com slash administrator. Oops, supposed to be a backslash. My bad. And then it's password. Here we go. Next. I'm just going to go over the defaults for now. Nothing fancy. Continue without matching. I'm not too concerned about that now. And there we go. Start the synchronization process when configuration completes. So that's just going to start the initial synchronization. 
how long the synchronization takes is up to you. But keep in mind, the first one's going to be almost basically like a full one. So it's limited by, or it depends on your internet speed. It depends on how big your Active Directory is. But the first one could very well end up taking you five minutes. It could take you five hours. It could take you a whole day. It's not set in stone. So just because mine takes five minutes doesn't mean yours will take five minutes. So I'm going to start the process here and I'm going to speed things up for you guys to do a bit of a time lapse. One eternity later. And there you go, guys. The synchronization is complete. That took a while. I'm not exactly sure how long it took because if I'm being perfectly honest, I actually stepped away from my machine, went and made myself a snack and all kinds of things like that. And when I came back, it was done. So I can't tell you exactly how, how long it took. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this and I'm going to go back to the Azure Active Directory now and show you that it did in fact synchronize the accounts we had here. So if you guys remember, we have these accounts and these groups that I went and made. There's my objects and all that. So with that being said, let's go to the portal and see if this actually synchronized to the cloud. All right, here we are on the Azure portal. I'm going to go back to the users. I think let's start there. And suddenly we've got more than the two default accounts I initially had. So originally I had this one here and that one at the bottom. And now I've got a whole bunch of extra stuff here. Oh, there we go. Um, On-premise direct sync and all kinds of stuff. So we've got a whole bunch of extra stuff here. You can actually see which ones are being synchronized. You can see here it says directory synced. Yes, yes, yes. It's synchronizing those accounts from the on-premises domain. And 10 to 1, the groups is the same story. So I'm going to go back now to the Active Directory. Let's just go have a peek at the groups. I'm actually taking the long route here. All right, let's just go back to groups. If I click here on groups, and there we go. We can see there's a whole bunch of groups that we've actually got here now. IT, IT department, whole bunch. All right, guys. So like usual, that is pretty much the lesson for today. I hope you've learned something. If you have, please smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Otherwise, you're not going to know when the next lesson comes out. And like usual, guys, I'll see you on the next one. If you love me, let me know. Mm -hmm. If you don't, then let me know.